here at Bristol International Raceway as Hensley, the leader, jumps out front, and here come a whole gaggle of trucks who had to start at the back. 84 is Rutman, three is Skinner. They're in a traffic jam with Bodai, and they're bumping at Bristol. Man, they are bumping and going. Man, oh man, this is from Hornaday. Oh, and the, the three car had to jump out of the throttle, and Hornaday drives alongside. It's like a flat out pace lap as they run two by two. There's Skinner wedging his way up a position. Hornaday could not get through the opening. And now they go three wide. Three wide. That, that was PJ Jones on the outside making a big move. Hornaday's not going with him. Hornaday's a birthday boy, celebrated his 37th on the 20th. What was that a week ago? Skinner is uh, 38 uh, today. Could that be right? Or tomorrow? Now they're three abreast again, right in front. And Bonine goes by on the outside of Churchill on the inside of Hornaday. Wow. Bodine not afraid to muscle his way through. They asked Bodine, and once they finally got that uh, controversial driver's meeting convened, they asked Bodine to speak on behalf of those experienced with Bristol and give the boys who had not been here before a little advice. And he said, quote, consider changing professions. <laughs> a tough racetrack. Never seen Jeff Bodine. That's the Exide Batteries truck. Ford truck. Well, he commits to that opening, doesn't he? And he gets through. He doesn't want to let Skinner get away. He figures that's a good man to follow the front. Skinner's won seven of these things. Bodine was in those prepared number seven. And now from Hornaday's truck, we see them that's trying to go three wide there. Bob Reed back there on the inside and outside off. PJ coming with him. Yeah. That time, Hornaday got the best of it by far as... Uh, P.J. finally gets around and leaves Churchill side by side with Breback, who had a real hard crash in the Arca race at, uh, at Michigan. I said, uh, yeah, I said Breback was uh, Kerry Teague, or Churchill was Kerry Teague in the 51. He's got some short track experience. He knows his way around these kinds of ovals. But uh, Bristol's a tough old place. What is, the, what is the hardest thing about Bristol? Because you have to drive through the corner so very hard. You go down in the corner, right there, you back off the throttle, and you hit that bank and back on the throttle, right around. There's just so little time to relax at Bristol. You get around the racetrack in about 17 seconds, and about 15 of that, you're under some kind of pressure. And there we see the leader, Jimmy Hensley, once again is saying, see you guys. Boy, he is hooked up. For a guy who's never driven one of these things, he's obviously figured it out. Keep in mind, it is pretty much a Winston Cup chassis with a uh, silhouette truck body hung on it. It's a combination that a lot of people think is going to be a motorsport star in the future in terms of series. Their second, third, and fourth. Samus Wendell, the channel lock truck, is second. The 98 truck, Butch Miller, is third, and Toby Butler, the ortho truck, is fourth. Now, it is not a rule that Butch Miller has to be third. It's only coincidental that he's going to get into the back of Swindell and instead gets into Butler. Butch of the 98, the Ford, has been third in the last four races and is currently running in that spot, and he doesn't like that. He wants to win these things. That 54 truck, Steve McCurchin, on the inside as these guys go by. There goes Butch Miller. There goes Butler. And there's our second-place truck, Sammy Swindell. Teacher to lap down as Swindell goes to work on the uh, 23 truck of T.J. Clark, who's now a couple of laps down. Swindell has adapted to this truck business very effectively. Sprint car racer, succeeding in trucks where his World of Outlaws counterpart uh, was unable to do so. Of course, Steve Kinzer is back in the sprints after an aborted stock car career. 75 is Bill Sedgwick, and he's on the move. He's fifth ranked in the series standings. He's currently seventh, and Bob Strait is running eighth in the 37, the black 37 truck. Sedgwick's an interesting guy. He started his career in uh, stock car racing as a, uh, as a crew chief out of the West Coast, right? a crewman, a tire changer out on the West Coast for the legendary Herschel McGriff. And he's been in and out of the cockpit. Now he is driving again. He used to be Hornaday's crew chief. That's a ninth place truck, Joe Rutman, Ernie Urban, and the Zemo Fellas with no fear. And that's from what, 22nd starting spot, I believe, for Rutman? He was uh, penalized for that, so he's passed an awful lot of trucks in 32 laps. He's trying his best to get by Bob Strait. He knows he's got to put the pressure on Strait because of that three truck. Mike Skinner, the second truck back, gets in front of him. Steve Portingay in the pocket critic 83 between
Gutman and Skinner. Oh, he got a little sideways there. I don't know if Skinner tapped him in the back or not. May have been a coming through message there. Porky Day got loose for a minute, gathered it back up, and still has Skinner behind him. They're straight on the inside of Sedgwick, but there's three back right in front, but he makes that spot. Here comes Rutman. He gets by as well. Oh, and oh, also the three truck. Marty Reed. Well, we can bring you an update on Rick Corelli. He's sixth in the point. Oh, we got trouble. Got one tonight. in the wall here. That's oh, we got a crash. Gay. Let's go back out in the track. Porton Gay hitting the wall at turn one. So the coffee critic machine has been shortened up on the left rear. And he brings it back down to pit road. He's going down the back pits, I guess. I don't know if they have pits back there or not, or if he would just, this car will not roll. Oh, look at this. You got a... A substantial handling problem, Benny. He does have a substantial handling problem. Contributed to, I believe, by the water on pit road. I think the rear panard bar is broken on that car. Let's see if we can in replay can tell what happens. Looks like that he might have had some help from Legacy. I don't know for sure. They were certainly close together. Whether or not they got together, that would be the second contact in which Legacy has been involved. You saw Hornaday slip by on the bottom. As Steve Portengay slaps the wall, here's another look at it. Look for contact. Uh, yeah, that had already happened. Whatever had happened. There goes Hornaday. If there was contact, it had already happened. There's so uh, we can't say for sure. Portengay's pretty good uh, West Coast race truck driver. Comes out of that Featherlight Southwest tour, and uh, Yukia, California is home for him. This will be the second caution of the night on lap 37. We are live from Bristol. Race delayed by rain. This is the man who has dominated it thus far. And I guess it's not a huge surprise. Jimmy Hensley has a tremendous amount of experience on this racetrack. 16 Bush Series starts and two Winston Cup races. Benny? Jimmy Hensley still the leader. Watch as he goes by P.J. Jones. Boom. Comes off the corner. Boom. Down in turn one. <laughs> Boom. That's just if it ain't right. Ooh, and the one truck, PJ, <laughs> almost lost control as he, the 30 truck, Hensley puts PJ a lap down. Rubbing is racing, they say, when they get to the short tracks, and you do a little rubbing at Bristol for sure. PJ Jones decided he's going to make a pit stop. You can't change tires, so maybe they're going to make an adjustment. Marty Reed, what's going on down there? Well, that was Steve Portengay. They are working to repair the damage on the left rear. They also had to change a tire on the left front. It looks like the, the most severe damage is on the left rear, but he will be able to get back into the race. I'm not so sure about Rick Corelli. We were telling you about him. They are working on the uh, rear end of that car. The suspension was bent, and some of it was broken, and uh, they're, they're going to be in here for at least a long time, and his sixth-place standings is definitely in jeopardy. So as the work continues on Portengay's truck, P.J. Jones making a stop, and uh, the rules do not allow a tire change here unless the tire is damaged. So P.J. is apparently going for a chassis fix. We'll be back with more from Bristol Live right after this. 